Oh man, I'm so glad I got that money making video out. Now I can just kind of relax, take it easy, and chill for a I little bit. I heard they really oh, like that video there, bad fuck. You really can't be sneaking up on me like that, bro. Next time I'll have to hit you with a hiya. Oh, sorry there, bad. I was just admiring from afar when I noticed we could really use a tips and tricks video there, bad. Okay, but why is your breath so wet, dog? Oh no, eh? Now I'm a bit embarrassed there, bad. Huh. Okay. Well. Tips and tricks it is. Hey, listen up for a sec because I'm going to tell you how to earn free money scrolls throughout this video. We recently had an update where staff members are allowed to bury items all over Xeros. All you have to do to claim this treasure is to find it and dig it up and bada bing bang boom! Effigy Swiper has found buried treasure. And the best part is, even Iron Man can participate. Be sure to pay attention during this video as I'll have dig spots and random timestamps for those with a sharp eye. Alrighty, with that out of the way, let's get you back to your regularly scheduled giveaway info. Hello, hello, hello. And before we get started, we are going to be hosting another giveaway on this video. If you'll take a second to look at the screen, you'll see exactly what we're going to be giving away on this video. Yes, this is definitely not pre-recorded. All you have to do to enter is to like the video, comment your in-game name, and subscribe to the channel, and you are good to go. Good luck to everybody that enters, and with that being said, let's get started. Before we get into the tips and tricks, Xeros is looking to do a $5,000 USD PayPal giveaway for our new upcoming game modes. All we have to do is get this post to 1,000 Xeros reactions and bada bang bang boom, $5,000 will be up for grabs. So if you haven't yet, be sure to visit the Xeros Discord and show this post a little love. And with that being said, let's get into it. Tip number one is going to have to be letting you know that the herb sack is not completely useless on here. Once you buy your herb sack, right click it and click open and it will automatically pick up any herbs dropped by NPCs. This tip is mainly for rogues and irons, considering regular accounts don't really have a need to hoard herbs, but I reckon we have plenty of each buzzing around the server for this tip to be worth putting in the video. Tip number two, check the wiki page. In your client, type wiki, and would you look at that, a whole page full of useful information, including a power mining guide? I mean, you've gotta appreciate the effort, man. Tip number three, fishing on here is slow as hell, so if you ever plan on comping, Doing some AFK fishing in the early chapters of your account would be a smart investment. Not only do you get raw Caron Buanji, which you can sell for cash, but each catch also counts towards your 5k fishing requirement for comp. And if you're lucky, you'll end up catching a couple of angler pieces and clue scrolls as well. Speaking of skilling outfits, tip number four is going to be to foe your skilling outfit duplicate pieces. Most skilling outfits foe for 500 points per piece, so depending on how much you skill, that will definitely add up in the long run. You might be sitting on a gold mine, fellas. Be sure to check your banks. Tip number five, use Zahud as much as you can. One of the greatest features of Zahud is that she can decant your potions for you, which is absolutely mwah, immaculate, but she just does so much more. Not only will she clean your ungodly amount of herbs for literal pennies, but she will also turn them into unfinished potions for just a few more pennies, dude. Look at this. Decanting was free, and this only took maybe 200k coins to save me maybe an hour and a half of clicking potions. If you're not utilizing Zahud, you're doing it wrong. Tip number six, treat V panel points like your lifeblood. V panel points are awarded for voting and they can very easily be misspent. Well, the only thing you should be spending your blue V panel points on would be the 10% drop rate for one hour. As someone who struggles to have enough V panel points to make it through the day, take my advice and do not misspend them. Tip number seven, you can cancel your Cerberus task for free. I'm not sure if this is intentional, but it has saved me so much money and Slayer points when I'm searching for a boss task. For tip number eight, I'm going to show you how to get a relatively easy Ring of Wealth imbued, which is an extra 8% drop rate without having to depend on RNG. If you look in the boss points shop, you'll see that there's a Ring of Wealth in there for only 5,000 boss points. Now this can be farmed relatively quickly, anywhere from two to five hours, depending on where you go. At the same time you're getting boss points, you're also getting drops that you can foe and or sell depending on your game mode, in which you can go buy a Ring of Wealth scroll from the foe shop. By following these steps and putting these components together, you will receive a Ring of Wealth imbued, which is an extra 8% drop rate and, in my opinion, absolutely invaluable. Unless you're a regular account, then you can just buy it for about 250 mil. 
Tip number nine is going to be a little controversial, but if I'm being completely honest with you, I don't give a fuck what your opinion is. Do not attempt to upgrade your fucking click pad. It's just not worth it, dude. Buy yourself a regular click pad to keep in your inventory and then forget it even exists. Just always keep it in your inventory for the free 5% drop rate boost. In the meantime, save up your foe after that to buy yourself a rock pet and then do the same strategy. Buy the rock pet, keep it in your inventory for 10% drop rate and once you have enough for another rock pet give it a chuck in the fire that way you'll always have a drop rate pet to fall back on tip number 10 is for anybody that plans on comping in order to comp you're going to need 50 briophita kills which is going to require you to get 50 mossy keys the best way i personally found to get these keys would be to barrage clump moss giants in the catacombs once you've got them all darted and aggroed on you all you have to do is bring them over to make one big clump put on your staff and bada bing bang boom dude you have got one giant mass of moss giants. By using this method, you are not only gaining mossy keys, but you are also gaining totem pieces used to kill Skatiza, which is also a trim comp wreck. Tip number 11, whilst PVMing, sometimes you'll stumble upon a secondary Hespori ingredient. If this happens, all you have to do is type bark, and it will link you to a branch of the wiki page that will explain everything you need to know about Hespori ingredients. Tip number 12, your smoldering stones are not useless. I understand how frustrating it can be to get a smoldering stone drop instead of a crystal drop, but fear not. You can use these stones on either a dragon pickaxe or a dragon axe to turn them into infernal variants which will then foe for actual decent foe. 7.5k for the pickaxe and 4.5k for the hatchet. For tip number 13, I'm going to show you how to get to the edge dungeon because for some reason there's not a direct teleport there and I've actually just learned today that there are two ways to get to the Edgeville dungeon. The first way to get to Edgeville dungeon would be to take the ladder in the Slayer Hut which is just west of home. All you'll do is click and bada bing bang boom, congratulations, you found the dungeon. But if you'd like to be a little sneaky about it, there's a second ladder just east of home in the shop area that will also take you directly into the Edgeville dungeon. I actually did not know about this until today so uh, thank you space for the information. Tip number 14, enter the calendar events. Since release, Xeros has held cash prize challenges every single day. These challenges range anywhere from just logging in with 126 combat to completing 10 raids, so don't miss out on this easy loot. Tip number 15, interact with the YouTube interface. We always have so many active giveaways for you to enter and win, it's literally free money, dude. Tip number 16, infinite tokens and the Warriors Guild. Step one, get a full set of armor. Step two, show that suit of armor who its daddy is. And once you have 200 Warriors Guild tokens, go ahead and grab yourself an attack Cape. Step three, profit. You can stay here for as long as you want. As long as you have your attack cape equipped, your tokens will not degrade. So happy hunting, and I hope you don't go 500 dry. Tip number 17, I'm gonna show you exactly how to get your rune pouches because this is highly requested. You're gonna go north of home and speak to this dapper gentleman, the mage of Zamorak. He's gonna ask you what you want. You're gonna say, I'm in need of a pouch. And he's gonna give you a pouch because he's such a nice guy. Once you obtain your pouch, open your monsters teleport and select cows. If you have a cannon, it'll make this a lot easier. If you don't, just punch him to death, bro. Like, it's not hard, but eventually they will drop medium. Oh, well, there it is, medium pouch and a large pouch. Just like that, we've gotten all three pouches in under 10 minutes. Tip number 18, use the instance manager. In my opinion, not enough people take advantage of this. Not only can you create your very own instance for every single God Wars boss, but you can also create instances for things like Crystal Cave for Crystal Slayer as well, and I don't think enough people People know that. Take advantage of the instance manager south of home. Tip number 19, if you ever find yourself wanting to complete the Clues Pearl collection log or getting yourselves a quick pair of ranger boots, be sure to get your clues at the gem rocks. Tip number 20, you can earn cash scrolls just from participating in Outlast tournaments. Currently, the best reward in the Outlast shop is a $10 scroll, which sells for a whopping 100 Outlast points, which really isn't too much if you're just doing Outlast on the side. Tip number 21, if you would like to efficiently farm crystalline keys, you need to block crystalline dragons, bears, and dark beasts. The crystalline key drop rate on these NPCs is definitely a little bit better than the smaller mobs, but they have 260 health to counteract that. The drop rate for crystalline keys from the smaller mobs is definitely a bit higher, but the health is a fraction of its bigger counterpart. So trust me when I tell you, blocking the bigger tasks will definitely benefit you in the long run. 
Speaking of Crystal Slayer, tip number 22, use an Imbue Dust on an Elven Signet to get 10% max damage bonus as well as having the ring automatically pick up your Crystal Shards. Tip number 23, I'm going to show you how to get to the Amethyst Mine and the Woodcutting Guild. Speak to Gadrin at the Skilling Teleport and he will beam you directly into the Amethyst Mine, easy peasy lemon squeezy. Alternatively, if you're trying to get to the Woodcutting Guild, you will speak to the Woodsman Tutor at the Skill Teleport and he will also teleport you directly into the Woodcutting Guild. Tip number 24, you can actually trade in your Omelet Pet for a free Rare Raids Key. All you have to do is use your own pet on this shady individual and in return he will give you a Rare Key. And you never know. With that rare key, you might just get a little unlucky. Oh my. Tip number 25 is going to be the leaderboard rewards. We have both daily and weekly leaderboard rewards ranging anywhere from XP gained to Theater of Bloods ran all the way up to Nightmares killed. There are plenty of juicy rewards to be had from every category, so take your pick and get to grinding. Tip number 26, you are able to gamble ban yourself. If you find you're having a streak of bad luck and you really just can't control heading to the dice zone, speak to the gambler in the southeast corner of dice and he will offer you a gamble ban. What this means is you will no longer be able to request dice or flower pokers from any player in the dice zone. Tip number 27, you can actually buy tasks for all Cerberus, Alchemical Hydra, and even Kraken. I realized now I gave you a tip earlier about faux pets without explaining what faux pets are, so if you do need to know what faux pets are about, type faux in game, and it will take you to another section of the wiki telling you exactly what faux pets are all about. Tip number 29, if you're finding yourself low on dragon darts or dragon arrows, you should consider heading over to Dark Beast as they are a great resource for both. And finally, tip number 30, play the game exactly how you want to play the game. If you want to be a one defense pure, by god, you'd be a one defense pure. If you want to make yourself a wildly locked account, I say go for it, chief. Don't let anybody try to tell you that the way you play the game is inefficient because the whole point is to have fun. And if that's how you have fun, then by god, you just do what you gotta do, brother. As always, thank you all so much for giving this video a watch. Don't forget to enter the giveaway. All you have to do is to like the video, comment your in-game name, and subscribe to the channel, and you are good to go. And with that being said, I will We'll see you gorgeous bastards in the next one. Hey Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your short hair. Do you even care? You got a bad attitude, mix it with a bunch of dudes, and all you're left with is a menacing stare. Watch that taste out your mouth, little princess. How you gonna tell me that your life is worth?